everyone, and welcome to episode 27 of Games with Go. Today we are going to add monsters to the dungeon. So before we get started, let's clean a couple things up first. Uh, last episode, um, <clears throat> at the end we made our UI uh, multi-threaded and made it able to support multiple uh, windows at a time. But for now, let's just do one window. We might revisit that again later if we want to do multi-monitor support or something. So I'm changing these both back to one. And then let's go to our game logic. <clears throat> and we had some uh, debugging stuff in our A star function. Um, some sleeps so we can see the visualization uh, when we were testing. Let's take those out for now. There's two time.sleeps in there. Let's take those out and then make sure we're running. So you can see now if you hit S, you just immediately get <coughs> a path back to the debug goal we set. Okay, so that looks good and we can quit. Okay, so monsters. Um, I was thinking the first monsters we would add uh, I, would, I was thinking we'd start with two, and the reason to start with two is if you start with multiple monsters, you start thinking about how you have to write the code to handle more than one kind of monster. Uh, but you don't want to start with 20, because then you might <clears throat> start writing a whole lot of code for 20 monsters, and then realize too late that the design you have is no good and have to start over. So we'll start with two uh, and see how it goes, see if we're on the right track. So we're going to have a rat and a spider at first. And we'll use those those images. Now you're welcome to use anything you want, but that's what I'm going to do. So let's start. <clears throat> let's put most of our monster code in its own file. Um, it'll be part of the game package, but we'll just put it in a separate file. So it'll still be package game. And then let's define uh, a monster struct. So <clears throat> what are some things a monster is definitely going to have? We're going to have uh, a name. Uh, <clears throat> probably have something like hit points. Uh, it's going to have, um, we're going to have a, a character that is used to represent it. So uh, on our map, when we draw, we'll, we'll have some character that we'll be able to use to represent it. And in fact, I, I think what we're going to try is we're going to reserve all the capital letters for indicating various monsters. So we could have like rat and spider. And in order to support that, I want to change uh, the symbol for player. We're going to use a non-capital letter for player. Let's switch that uh, to the at sign. That'll be the main player. And in fact, a lot of old text games would use that symbol for the player. So we'll have to change um, that in here. This is our load level from file function. Let's change that to at. And then that frees up all of the capital letters to be different monsters. So we'll say, uh, we'll call it rune. I think that's what we called uh, the characters we used in the tiles as well. <clears throat> um, and a monster is also going to have a position, but I don't think we need to store that here. I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, I think that's it for now. There's definitely going to be more. Um, we're going to add items to the game, so we'll end up having something like a, a slice of items that a monster might be holding, things you would get if you killed it. Um, we might have some things like uh, aggressiveness. Maybe some monsters will run away from you. Others will run at you. Others might just stay still. But how about speed? That's something that we're probably going to use right away. So some monsters might be able to move more than one tile 
uh, per per turn of the player. Others might be able to move less than one uh, tile per turn of the player and so on. So we'll start with these things uh, that can define a monster. Well, maybe something like strength too. So how hard can they hit? How hard can they hit us or attack us? So we'll start with this for now and see how it goes. So the next thing uh, we need to figure out is how we're going to store our monsters. <coughs> um, one thing we could do is we have, you know, currently this this two-dimensional array of tiles. You could put, uh, we could make tile a struct. Currently, it's just a, a character. Uh, we could make it a struct and like put the monsters inside there. Uh, the problem with that is you definitely want to be able to iterate over all the monsters in your level to do things like update their positions, right? The monsters are all going to move around, so you want to be able to to go in a loop over all the monsters. And if your monsters are part of the game map, you'd have to iterate over the entire map to get at all your monsters. So we don't want to do that. But we do also want to be able to get um, a monster based on a position really quickly. Like if we are moving from <clears throat> one position on the map to the other, we need to check if, if there's a monster there or not. Because if there is, we're going to attack rather than move. So. Uh, storing them just as an array uh, might be less than ideal because in order to get uh, to see if a monster is in the next tile, you have to iterate over the whole array and check each position, um, which is a little awkward. And the performance would be bad if there was a lot of monsters. Uh, however, for this type of game, that might actually be the fastest way to do things. It's just to have a uh, slice of monsters uh, and just iterate through it, because iterating over a small array is incredibly fast. Uh, but there's another pretty easy option to do that kind of gets us the best of both worlds, probably, and that's to use uh, a map. So we've used those before, um, like in our UI, we have the texture index, right, where we can provide a tile and get back a rectangle for that tile. So we're going to try that. We're going to do a map where we provide a position and we get back uh, uh, what monster is there. So we'll do, uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll just make it part of the game's level. So each level will have a monsters map. So it'll be a map that <clears throat> takes a position as a key and the value that you get back is a monster. So the handy thing about this is um, you can iterate over all the elements in a map as well as getting things by key. So for example, you can say uh, something like level dot monsters of some position and get back a monster. But you can also say for key comma value over the range of level dot monster. And then you can efficiently iterate through all of the monsters that way as well, because uh, the way a map is implemented behind the scenes is with an array. Um, so you can also iterate over it very fast. So we can iterate over it fast and we can get whether or not a, a monster is at a given position very fast as well if we use a, a map. So we'll give that a try. We might change our mind later, but that's what we're going to do for now. So our level is going to have a map of monsters. Easy enough so far. So <clears throat> we need to have uh, rats and spiders. So uh, let's Try something like this. So we'll make uh, functions new rat, which returns a monster, and new spider. And these will basically construct uh, a monster with the appropriate, appropriate thing, appropriate things. So. We'll do, uh, and this will be pointers. 
So we'll do So the room for rat, we'll use capital R. The name will be rat. Hit points, uh, rats be pretty weak. Uh, and just we'll do normal normal speeds. So they can go one one turn per move, just like the player. I don't know, maybe we'll make them fast, just so they're different than spiders. So we'll say rats are really weak, but kind of fast. So we got a character, name, hit points, strength, and speed. <clears throat> and then we can do uh, spider. If anyone has questions at any time, feel free to, to hop in. Anything you like, fire away. So we'll make spiders a little stronger. They're still not a super powerful monster and they'll have a normal speed. Okay. So <clears throat> next step, let's add some to our map and then start creating this list when we, when we load the level. So we'll start out in a room uh, safe. And maybe we'll put a rat here. Maybe we'll put a bunch of spiders in here. <clears throat> so let's see, what's this? Okay, I put the monsters inside of game. I want to put that inside of level. So pull monsters out of game and monsters will go inside level. So each level will have its own uh, monster map. And I'm going to put it above this uh, debug thing because this is something we might rip out uh, at some point when we're no longer doing any debugging. <coughs> Okay, so now we need to update load level from file to handle these two monster types. So we've got case R for rat, case S for spider. So in the case of R, we want to add uh, Let's see. We'll want to say uh, level dot monsters of this current position. So position x y equals new rat. And then for spider, same thing. Ah, okay, so we need to make our map uh, spider uh, pointers to monsters. Okay. <clears throat> and we also need to initialize our monsters. Uh, let's see. What is the syntax for that? Just make and map type definition. So make map from position to monster. So this will initialize our map. It'll be empty. And then we'll start adding things as we come across them. Okay, so now we need to. Oh, there's one other thing we need to do, which is. We need to do the same thing where we make the floor 
So whenever we have a monster, we don't have an indication of what the floor tile is under it, right? Because our editor is pretty basic. So what we did for a player was we said that the floor tile is pending. And then we'll fill it in programmatically. So we'll do the same thing anytime there's a monster. We'll say T is, pen, is pending. <coughs> Okay, and this is our loop that, that then fills this in. And something we want to do here is, we might do this tonight if we finish the other stuff, is uh, we should really use um, breadth first search to find the first floor tile. So we could potentially use the breadth first search that we implemented to sort of show how A star works to do this better. Because this is just looking directly around uh, the pending tile for a floor tile. And there are some cases where there won't be any that are floor tiles and this will fail. So let's do a to do there. We might come back to this. Okay, but for now, the places we've placed these monsters, that should work. And so we're gonna need to draw them. And to do that, we'll need to add them to our Atlas index. So we've got rats and spiders now. And this is just a text file that says, for this symbol, we're gonna load uh, this image from our big atlas of images. So we have to do our division again. So here's our rat, uh, X is 912. So he's gonna be at 28. And his Y position, 2063, 64. And the spider, I guess, is just the next one, right? Yeah, so that's easy. 29, 64. <clears throat> okay, so how does... How do we draw the player? Okay, so this loop draws all the, all the floor tiles. Then we draw the player. So we're gonna want to also have a loop to draw all of our monsters. So for... We don't care about the key, I don't think. Uh, no, we do care about the key because that tells us the position. So for every uh, position and monster in the range of level.monsters, we are going to Render the texture atlas. Let's see, did we just hard code the player? That's silly. We should fix that while we're here. So when we're building our index here, We just need to add the player to it and it should be fine. So the player was at what, 2159? And then we should be able to just get it from the texture index. Oh, I see our texture index uses tiles, not runes. Oh, that's the same thing. The tile is a rune, isn't it? Yeah, the tile is a rune. Let's 
So let's just try this. Um, for now, let's comment this out. We'll try this out on the player first. We should be getting that from our texture index, not from not hard coded. So is it going to let us do that? Yeah, I think it will. I see. So this returns these return arrays of rectangles, and we only want the first one. So remember, we uh, we allow for multiple rectangles for any given character, so that we can draw these uh, walls randomly with different variants. But for player, for now anyway, there's just one. So we're gonna get the first texture or the first source rectangle from our texture index. And that should. Still run fine. Oh no. 90. Oh, we need to specify one here. <clears throat> it's expecting that. OK, there we go. Excellent. So <clears throat> now drawing the monsters is easy. So the monster source rect, we just get the monster's room, get the first uh, rectangle in the array. <clears throat> then we need the destination rectangle, which is based on the position of the monster. Times 32, because these are 32 by 32 images. And the offset is based on where the center of the screen currently is, so we adjust for that. And offset the Y as well. And then we give the width and height, 32 by 32. So this needs to be capital. All this stuff needs to be capitalized. So that we can see it in here. We'll need to cast this to a tile. Where did this UI come from? Oh no, that's correct. 
Here, render undefined type renderer. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, we've got a rat. We've got our spiders, wherever we put them. Cool. Now, currently, they don't do anything. We can walk on top of them, which is no good. <clears throat> So let's make them alive a little bit. We'll make them uh, chase after the character as soon as they are capable of reaching the character. So we'll use the A-star search we did last episode uh, for them to figure out if they can reach the character and start running after him. So what we'll want to do is have an update An update function that takes a monster uh, receiver and it'll also need the level so a monster is going to be trying to reach the player so it's going to want to know the player's position. And it's going to want to A star search for it. So it'll do Okay, what's the whole game? Oh, that's so I can do the debug stuff. Uh, we're not going to want to do that anymore. I think we can yank the, yank the game stuff out. I'm going to try it. So the reason we were passing the game is so we could have it draw. Um, yeah, all it needs is a level. Let's try that. Then we can delete this. This will be the same level. So then it'll be level dot a star, <clears throat> and the start position will be uh, the player, the monster's position. So I guess we do want to put the monster's position in here after all. Um, it's just gonna have the position. We use the struct embedding. And these will take a position. Okay, so in that position will be the start, and our goal is the player position. And A star should return a slice of positions. And I'm just going to print those out for now to do some debugging. Because one thing I'm not sure of is what does this return 
if it doesn't find uh, any path to the player. I don't remember what we did for that, so we're going to check that out. Okay, back to the game. We're going to have to change this a little bit because now this needs the position. All right. <clears throat> and then every time after we every time we loop through the game, we need to update all of our monsters. its current level. Okay, so for now, every time we move, the monsters should do an A-star search for the player and print out the result. Let's see what we get. So I'll make my first move. Okay, so we just get back empty lists. This is just the, remember we set the debugging. So that's, that's all the areas he's tried to search for the player and hit the doors so it couldn't go any further. Okay, so now the rat's got a path to the player. Let me open the door. So that's what we're looking for. So now we need to say uh, if the length of this position is greater than zero, uh, then we need to move. And uh, how far we move depends on our speed. So I guess we should actually do it like Maybe like this. For i is equal to zero, i is less than speed. I also has to be less than length of positions. Less than monster speed. Capital speed. Uh, let's not do it this way, because we need to handle floating point speeds, and that's not how that's going to work. So for now, let's just say that the uh, monster dot position. Well, let's let's make a move function. So monster move will take a position. update our position, but we also need to update the map and the level. So let's see how do we do that.
Okay, so we just need to reassign the value in the struct. To get it back. Except we're, so we're storing monster pointers, right? Yeah, so I think Yeah, I think the most straightforward way is to delete the key from the map entirely and add a new one. So we'll say delete uh, level dot monsters. <clears throat> and we give it the key, which is, oh, this should be in the So delete the current position, then add a new one. <clears throat> uh, that way, by using this move function, we make sure we always do this properly and don't forget to update one location, but not the other. <clears throat> So we'll say move to position zero. So if we have a path, then move, uh, we'll just move one for now. See how it looks. Okay, they've got nowhere to go for now. Not moving. Why not? Oh, you know what? Position zero probably is the current position. I bet that's why. There we go. Now we're being chased. Bad news. It got us. Ooh, we found another bug. Uh, Monsters 27. Okay, this actually needs to be greater than one. Otherwise, it just means you're on top of the player, uh, which we're not gonna allow eventually, but. <clears throat> See if we get the spiders chasing us too. Oh yeah, they're all coming. This is interesting. That is not very smart by them, is it? So I'm moving first, and then they're searching for a route and just following along. rather than coming down towards me. We'll have to think about whether that makes sense. Okay. 
So we've got monsters that chase us. Let's work on making the speed thing actually work. Maybe. Let's see. Let's have them not <clears throat> intersect with us. So we'll make them move, check to see if they can actually move where they're trying to move to. Um, so one thing we need to check uh, <clears throat> is if there's already something there. So uh, we can check the monsters array. So let's see, we can do underscore exists equals So this will tell us if there's already something at the position we want to move to. So we, we don't want anything to exist there or we can't actually move there. And we also want to make sure the player isn't there. So We want to make sure those, the two position and the levels player position are not equal. And then <clears throat> it doesn't matter for now because we're only using this A star search, which only searches valid uh, tiles. Uh, but we probably want to eventually check, we'll do it to do, um, check if the tile being moved to is valid. Uh, for instance, if they tried to move into a wall, um, they shouldn't be able to, unless it's maybe maybe some monsters can move into walls and we let them, but some can't. But for now, this should keep the, the monster from intersecting the human player. Let's try it. Okay, but it lets me intersect them. So let's fix that too. So it should happen um, if you try to move and, the, and there's a player there already is you should attack it. But we're not going to do the <coughs> fighting logic just yet. But I'll do no two. Okay, yeah, so for right now, we're just incrementing and decrementing our player's position when we move. So what we need to do is make a move function for the player, just like we did for the monsters. So let's do that. So basically the same logic. Except we're not going to check the player position. We don't need to do this. We just need to update the player's position.
So now we need to call this instead of just doing the math here. So Plus one, x minus one, x plus one. And then level player move, move, move. There we go. Now we can't move into them anymore. So that sets us up to start uh, handling attacks because once we move into something, we know we're not going to be moving. We're going to have to have to fight it. And the monsters are not running into each other either. Good deal. Okay. Any questions so far? Any thoughts? So some of the design here is, is open-ended too. So if there's ways you think this should work or are interested in seeing, let me know and I'll think about it. I am trapped. So I'm gonna take out the debug from A star for now because it seems like it's working fine. So I was just pulling out all the stuff that was setting the level.debug array that you can use to draw things. Okay, everything's still good. Okay, I think the next thing we should do is make the <coughs> uh, level loading handle the pending tiles better because that is a <coughs> bug waiting to happen. So this logic here, I can I can show you where it goes wrong. Um, like you could put a rat here, <clears throat> and looking all around it, it won't find any floor tiles, and I think it'll just crash. Yep, yeah. crashes at one forty two because uh, it's trying to it's trying to find a, a tile to be the floor, and there isn't one. So we should be able to use uh, our BFS function to help us out. So we're not using this for anything else. So let's just call this, uh, call it BFS floor. And it's gonna return a, what do we need exactly? We just need a tile. Yeah, we just need a tile that is a floor. So we're gonna return a tile. Take out this sleep. All 
Okay, so basically what we're after here, um, current is a position. So current tile will equal the level dot map of current dot y, current dot x. And then uh, switch current tile. So basically, if we find any floor, we'll just want to return it. Otherwise, we do nothing. Ah. You can do multi-dimensional arrays in some languages like this, like they have built-in support, but Go does not. It's actually just an array of arrays. So index the first array, then the second. Okay, and then this, <clears throat> if it never finds, why do we have too many? Oh, if it never finds anything, we can just return to default. Dirt floor. So right now this might not make much sense because we only have one type of floor, but eventually we'll have others. And so we want, uh, the floor we insert under something to match the surroundings. And since breadth first search will expand uh, from, from the position of the monster, it should find a good one, one that makes sense. As much sense as we can manage. <clears throat> so now all of this code can go away. All of this code. Uh, gone, and we can say level dot map position x y. Is that it? I think. So we'll do a breadth first search from the position that is has a pending tile. Find a, a floor tile for it and set it. I think that's it. We no longer are using any sleeps, so we can take that out. No good, what happened? Index out of range, 147. Oh, okay. So what's happening is Okay, yeah. So what's happening is the breadth first search uses the can walk logic and I don't think we want to anymore. But this exposes a bug anyway, which is if the player is on the edge of the map um, this can be an uh, index out of range. So we need to make sure that we're within uh, the dimensions of the map. So uh, let's make a helper function.
So what we want to check is make sure that the X position and the Y position are both within the range of the map. And this should check that. So then we can say uh, if in range otherwise you can't walk there and then check door don't think we need it on that but this could come in handy later so it's good to have it as a separate function And then BFS floor I think it should be okay. Let's give it a try. Okay, so now we're handi handling that case. It's giving it a dirt floor to be under. Okay, great. So we've got a more robust way of uh, finding the floor tiles under our guys. Okay, we just hit 9 o'clock. So that's going to be it for tonight. We've got uh, some monsters in here with some very basic AI and that they just always chase us. And so we can build on this uh, from here. So I guess next episode, the logical thing to do would be uh, start having some uh, experiment, start experimenting with combat systems so we can Get rid of these guys. Or they can get rid of us if we lose. So I'll hang around for a couple minutes. If anyone has any questions about tonight's episodes or any previous episodes, feel free to type away in chat and I'll answer them. And <clears throat> keep in mind, if you donate or subscribe, you can get access to the source code repo, which is uh, a releases tagged after every episode. So if you follow along with old episodes, you can get the state of the source at that episode. <clears throat> I'm going to clear out this rat that is trapped. All right, looks like no questions tonight. So I will see everyone uh, next time on Tuesday and we'll start figuring out how we're gonna do combat. See you guys later, thanks for tuning in.